Wow, that intro, <laughs> that was a total accident, but I posted it to Instagram and we we're all just laughing how it came out like the beginning of some sitcom. So yeah, just a funny accident. Anyways, I was thinking about how when you live somewhere with four seasons, it is so amazing when spring hits. I was riding a few weeks ago with my buddy Aaron and he had said, I hope it just stays like this. And usually it doesn't, you know, we can get snow in May here in Ohio, but we have been really lucky. We've had rainy days and we've had a couple chilly days, but we've had like July like weather. We've had a streak of days that hit the upper 70s and the 80s. You can see here, this is an evening and where everyone's riding in t-shirts. So it's been an awesome spring so far, like nothing you could really complain about. And just to the greening of everything, um, this is, video was shot over a couple weeks so you can see there it's already starting to get green but by the end of the video now everything is completely green and in bloom and it's just awesome it's gonna be 80 today the day I'm recording this so yeah it's it's just such a good feeling to be able to be out and be comfortable and not have to plan for all kinds of clothing situations and that I've mentioned how the winter hasn't been that bad but and bad in terms of like big snowstorms and only a little bit of extreme cold, but it was just gray and rainy all the time, which to me is almost worse because snow is rideable. Gray and rainy is just not what I like. Another thing is this whole beginning has been shot on the DJI Osmo Action 3, not Action, DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Yeah, it's a camera that has a mechanical gimbal. Um, I saw Terry Berenson using it for his live stream, but then I was actually at an event and a friend was using it and was telling me just how well it did in low light and stuff like that. So it just convinced me that I wanted to try it out. So I brought it out and you could see like in this factory stuff, you know, GoPros just can't stabilize in the dark. They don't have enough information because they're doing it all digitally. Whereas this actually having a real, um, you know, physical gimbal, it could stabilize all the footage no matter how dark it is. So I'm thinking it'll be a really cool camera for, you know, fall and winter when the rides are almost always in the dark and I want to show some stuff. But I didn't really buy it to use for what I'm using it for here, which is just riding. I just wanted to try it out because it was new. It's not very practical with its form factor and the way I shoot, which is handheld, because I just, it's just kind of a little, it's still very small, but it's a little bit, I can't, you know, hold onto the handlebars and stuff like that. I use the mouth mount for my GoPro. But it's so cool to have this kind of depth of field. You also have a joystick to move the gimbal. I need to get better at that because when you, it's kind of like when you fly a drone, you don't want people to notice you're flying a drone. You don't want to do sudden movements. So you see here, I kind of like jerk the camera in different spots. So that's not ideal. I'm just getting used to it and where it's pointing and all that. But I could see that, you know, I don't mount my cameras ever. And that's why it's not that practical for me because I like to be able to point them around. But maybe if I knew it was like, you know, that fall winter ride where it's going to be dark, it would be worth figuring out some kind of mounting system for it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. For me, I'm thinking more talking head, the vlog stuff. It comes with a wireless mi mic that you just goes right to the camera without needing any extra stuff. So really, it'll be really cool for when I want to go for a solo ride and talk about stuff. The rest of this video is back to the GoPro Hero 11, though, just so you know. So shooting in 5.3K, cutting it down to 16 by 9 and 4K. So... Yeah, I have been so busy this spring. Here you can see I'm meeting up for all my, my normal friends ride, but I couldn't even get to the start. I had to meet them out on the road. I do a lot of work for the University of Akron, photography work, and for a local hospital here in Cuyahoga Falls. So this time of year is just busy with graduation stuff and um, all kinds of events as the years kind of wrap up and you know the school year type thing kind of wraps up. So. It's been wild, so I've just been like sneaking on my rides when I can. You know, I've missed a couple of my group rides, which is always a bummer to me because it's something I extremely look forward to. But a lot of the other rides, I'm just like, okay, I've done enough work. I'm going to sneak out and get a solo ride for a couple hours and then, you know, get back and do a little bit more work before I go to bed. So this week, it's kind of finally slowing down. So I'm kind of excited to get back to doing some, some more, getting this YouTube stuff done. Like I said, some of this footage at the beginning was two weeks old. You could see here, this was one of the days. It had been beautiful all week, and then we went for this group ride, and it was actually chilly that evening. But that, was, that day was kind of an aberration, as it's, like I said, it's just been so nice in general. But yeah, so this is kind of a compilation video of a bunch of the rides I've been on, but just also how just I've said it before, I'm saying it again, how just good spring feels when it does hit in this part of the world. And being so busy, some of these rides are actually rides to photo gigs. So, you know, just getting out there and 
riding to work when I can, when I don't need to carry a bunch of equipment. Unfortunately, a number of my things have been up in the Cleveland area, so it's just not practical to, with the time it takes me to get up there to ride my bike. So I've also spent a bunch of time in the car and it's been, wow, I don't spend that much time in the car and it's been miserable. <laughs> I remember why I don't like driving now. And I've watched, I've watched people not let an ambulance get through a traffic light up near Cleveland and University Circle. Like people keep going and I'm like, there's really, you're gonna make an ambulance wait. This is like, you, your life is more important than whoever's in the back of that thing. But just a number of, you know, just the road rage and the, people speeding up just to get caught at these traffic lights where I'm going to be right next to them. It's, I just, yeah, how people live their life, like every single day, just being angry in their car blows my mind. So this was another one of our group rides and you can see here now the weather is absolutely beautiful. It was just so awesome to be out in it. Ben found some a couple new routes and we ended up going out to the rubber bowl. You'll see it here in a minute. So if you've watched my videos before we were shown the rubber bowl, now it is just a grassy hill. So um, you know, a grassy horseshoe. It was really, really wild to see the transformation since it's been torn down and filled in. A guy actually reached out to me on a rats ride a number of, a couple years ago. I did a nighttime lapse and I posted it to my other channel on YouTube, my photography channel. And he was making a whole history of the rubber bowl and he wanted to use the clip. And so I said, yeah, go ahead. Just give me, you know, throw a link in there. And so it's really cool. I'll link that down below if you're interested in any of that. He did a really good job. There was parts of the early history of the rubber bowl that I actually didn't know. There was a temporary stadium in there at first before they finished it. I had no idea. So yeah, and this night we went to, we stopped by a little market, grabbed some beers, and then we went over to a um, old school drive up style restaurant in order to go food and then took it to the top of the rubber bowl to hang out. So it's pretty cool. This was, uh, coincidentally, this was the exact same day the guy had emailed me. So it was cool to see like, you know, he's doing all this work on the rubber bowl and then, you know, we were out there, so. So with the weather getting this nice and, or it just already got nice, and then with um, my busiest stuff seemingly over. I never know what's going to happen. I could get a million calls uh, in emails today and be busy again. But in general, it should be a little bit more mellow for me. Um, I'm never I'm never that mad when it's really busy because I'm a freelancer and that's how I make my money. But we've started to be able to turn my attention towards some of the summer plans, late spring plans. So I know we have an overnighter Memorial Day coming up with the Joy Machines guys up in Cleveland. We have our Swift camp out that we always do every year on the solstice. Um, they just posted all their information about that. And then we do have our summer big trip that we usually do over 4th of July pretty much planned. We have all our campgrounds booked since we, we always do that ahead of time and we don't wing it on our summer trip because it is that busy time of year. So that's going to be cool. We're going to hit part of the Erie Canal Trail and then go through the Finger Lakes. We haven't nailed down all the route, but we have rough mileage estimates. So we just need to fill in the little gaps of is there any cool places, breweries we want to stop for lunch and all that. So kind of exciting. Even started to put some of the fall stuff that I've always or done the last few years onto the calendar, uh, nutmeg and all that. But that's definitely um, getting ahead of myself. I just want to make sure I don't double book and anything like that. So, yeah, this is all behind the rubber bowl. It's become interesting because the rubber bowl or the former rubber bowl has become this. There's people on dirt bikes. There's trails through the woods now. Now that like the structures are gone and an old lodge is gone, it's um kind of just become this weird little place where people kind of play around. That little section back there was Derby Downs. If you're familiar with uh, soapbox derby racing, that's where the world championship is held. And once in a while, we bomb down the Derby Car Hill. So it's not really fenced off. I Probably not they allowed to do it, but no one ever says anything. So we do it anyways. And this is going back through campus. It's kind of funny to be riding through campus for fun because I feel like I've done nothing but at campus. I almost feel like an employee of the University of Akron oh, lately. Nice. So drop me some comments below on what you have planned for the summer. Have any of you come up with interesting things? Any um, ride you're doing? Any bike packing? Any bike touring? Any just any goals? Like, you know, for me, this is usually the time of year where if I'm going to try and do something like big, even a solo day or a longer day, I start to plan for it with the weather being warmer. Um, I'm not much of a winter century guy. I haven't planned anything like that for myself yet. Um, other years I planned goals, but I'm just hoping my health holds up and my back holds up. I'm trying to keep up on all my stretching routine and my core strength training stuff that I just need to do as I'm 45 and I'll be turning 46 this summer. 
We've also been talking about some channel meetups, like casual type things, but not just here. I wouldn't mind doing like a Friday night one here. That would be like, you know, if you're local to the area or whatever. But we've also talked about doing Columbus and Pittsburgh. I know we've talked about Columbus for a while and even had stuff on the books that the weather has changed. But I definitely want to get back out to Columbus, back out to Pittsburgh, even if they're just like overnighters and we did an evening ride to a brewery with some industrial gravel, something, uh, you know, some of our local friends could plan out there. Uh, right here, this is interesting. This is this. I think that van said Great American Bike Tours, and it was full of bikes. And on the outside, there were some cool, like touring-looking bikes, and then there were also e-bikes in there. So Ben, right there, told me that right across from the bike shop, there's a hotel, and he sees it out there sometimes. So it sounds like they load the bikes up to kind of protect them in the evening, and also it seems like one of those where they bring all your gear from place to place. So. This, this next ride right here was yesterday as I'm recording this. Aaron had planned a cool route out to Kent. I've shown you all like kind of late winter and early spring how we've been trying to hit new roads and do all kinds of different stuff. She found some really cool country roads that took us out to like kind of paralleling the bike path for a while. So we were jumping on and off the bike path, hitting these new roads, but I've got a lot of new sections. I got over five miles I had never ridden before. And this road here, I didn't even, didn't even really know about. And I asked Erin how she found it and she said maps. She used maps. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Going up there. So I don't like to bore people with all the typical YouTube stuff that we're supposed to do, but I am getting close to a number where YouTube gives me some features if I hit it. So if you watch these videos sometimes, if you could hit the subscribe button for me, it helps out a lot. Not I won't right. ask this all the time, just asking it once. So thanks a lot. Also, I'm just really looking forward to this nice weather, making more videos, being out on the bike more. And thanks as always for watching. Hopefully I'll see you all out on the road soon. Peace.